عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومالاه وبعد We are finished with سورة البينة سورة نمبر 98 And this comes سورة الزلزلة سورة الزلزلة which many of our kids would memorize and it is surah number 99 surah al-zalzala is classified as a madani surah and some scholars classify it as a makki surah and the we know the description of the makki and the madani Madani means it came in Medina or after migration from Mecca to Medina. And the Mecca are the surahs that came down during the Mecca period, which is before the Hijra from Mecca to Medina. And this classification uh, is subject to Ijtihad sometimes, that's why there are differences. And sometimes it is subject to facts that everybody agrees to. So there are sewer that have a consensus opinion that they belong to the Mecca era. And there are sewers that get the unanimous uh, judgment of the scholars that they belong to the Madani era. In any way, uh, Surat Az Zalzala. <coughs> does what it is name is talking about. It causes the person at the core of their heart to be shaken, or so it should. Zalzala from Zalla. And from it comes Zalzala. What is Zalla and what is Zalzala? Zalla is when you slip. أن تزل قدم بعد ثبوتها Lest a foot may slip after it was firm in the ground. جزاكم الله خير. So Zalla is from to slip, which means it's like slipping on like a banana piece or something like this. Okay? Zalzala is when you lose balance. So it becomes Zalzala, which means to slip twice at the same time or more than once at the same time, which means to lose balance, to lose focus, to not know what to do. I don't know if any of you might have felt this. I felt it a couple of years ago when I slipped in the ice and I lost my balance. When you lose balance, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to protect or how to face your falling. A zalzala also refers to the earth shaking, which is called zilzal. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا we know that the earth is always in shaking and in movement, right? The crust of the earth is only solid in few spots. But the reality is that crust is always moving because underneath that crust there is a layer of thick, huge rivers and oceans of lava from the earth. You know what lava is? Lava is the burning materials that flow up when a volcano springs out or erupts, then it sends that fiery stuff into the sky. That stuff is always underneath the crust of the earth. When it moves but a little bit slowly, then it causes the crust of the earth to start shaking, to make things like waves and those waves create 
earthquakes. We call it earthquakes, as we call the sea waves, sea waves, there are earthquakes. When the earth starts to move based on the motion of the lava beneath the surface of the earth, the surface crust, then it creates those changing uh, rises and falling in the crust that causes what we call zilzal or an earthquake. So here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, when and if the earth shakes, it is shaken. What is the ayah really referring to? The ayah is saying that the earth is always shaking, but there is one of those shakes that will be the final and the biggest and the irresistible one. So when the earth starts to quake, to shake, at any point, in any place in the world, people start to run away from the center of the earthquake because the, the effect of the earthquake will be less in far away places from the center of the quake, okay? But when the earth shakes, it is final and most destructive shake, there is no running away. There is no place to run to because the entire earth, the entire globe will be in the state of complete <coughs> out of balance, complete shaking that never happened like it before. So there is no comparison. There is no background reference to say, this is what I will do. You can't. When the earth shakes its final and most destructive of shaking, then what happens? And the earth starts to throw up all the heavy stuff in it. So it's going to be accompanied also with lava and other minerals and other things erupting from beneath the earth. Likewise, in the Tafsir, you will find that most of the Mufassirin, they say that those are the athqal, the heavy stuff inside the earth, will be the bodies of humans who have been buried in the earth for years or thousands of years. Everybody will be like the earth is throwing up. This is akhrajat al ardu athqalaha. It starts to throw up or throw in the open all what is heavy in it. When it starts to throw up or throw off its burdens, things that it has been carrying for thousands and maybe even millions of years. And man, this is in reference to all humans, what's wrong, what's going on? What's wrong with the earth? What's going on? What's happening? And this is an expression of the reactionary shock after this earthquake, the final and the biggest one happens. I think we pointed out to the fact that geologists uh, have been talking about for years since they started to record uh, seismic effects and seismic uh, events, that they are saying that there is an expected so-called big one coming in California accompanied with the biggest volcano ever that will happen in the western side of the United States, in California, Nevada, in this area. They are saying that there is a huge volcano that is 400 years overdue that will be accompanied with the biggest earthquake ever that will eventually result in California and most probably part of Nevada will be thrown into the ocean. We know that such 
an event, they say, will cause the entire globe to be dark in the middle of the day, even if it happens in the summer. If, if you would remember about 20, 25 years ago, there was an earthquake and uh, a volcano that erupted in Iceland, northwest of Europe. And in Iceland, it is in the north part of the Atlantic Ocean. When this volcano erupted, the lava traveled miles in the sky and it covered the entire European continent and part of Turkey, so much so clouding and darkening everything that flights had to be canceled. They could not fly. It was not safe to send the flights to the sky or to accept the flights coming into that area. This was not the big one. That was just a, an Iceland, uh, earthquake accompanied with a huge volcano and it lasted for about one week. Check the Iceland volcano that stopped the airlines from flying over Europe and you will get the information we're talking about. So if this big one from California as expected erupted and it is overdue to erupt for over 400 years which means it could come any second. The destruction it will cause will be of epic proportion. It's going to be more than historic. More than historic. It will change the history of the Earth as we know it. Would this be the same as this zilzala? No. It wouldn't be anything to compare it with that but it will be monumentous and dangerous. وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا Every human being will be shocked that they will be asking each other what is wrong with the earth? We're used for the earth to shake, causing havoc somewhere, but now it is everywhere. Mind you that this will happen at a time when we now, before it had happened yet, right? We have all media covering every event, everywhere in the same second it happened. Because everybody is a media moving around. Everybody has somewhat a phone or camera that captures anything that happens around them. So it will be known everywhere and everybody would know immediately that there is no place to run to. There is no place. It will be reported from the east of the globe to the west of the globe to the north to the south. The earth will change its nature. It will not be what we have come to know it. When man asks what is the matter with it, يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا At that moment, on that day, the earth will start to declare and announce its news. The news about what? The news about everything. Whatever man has been doing, whatever corruption man has spread, whatever disobedience and zulm and oppression that man has spread all over the earth. So the qiyamah is what the ayat are really talking about. So this is not a big earthquake, like any big earthquake. This is now clearly talking about the day of Qiyamah. People will be thrown out of their graves. People will be asking what is going on. People will be shocked and they will have no place to run to. And everybody will be running away, but not knowing where to. Everybody will be running. Everybody will be running because everybody is so scared that he will be swallowed, something will happen to him, he will be burned by the lava coming out of the earth and everything else. So it is going to be a monumentous event. 
يومئذ تحدث أخبارها now at that moment on that day the earth will be giving its news what is the news the news is everybody who has been denying that this life is only temporary that this life is coming to an end one day that everything living on the earth will perish one day this is the day this is the day when every living thing will perish. What does the Prophet Sallallahu say we need to do when we witness, God forbid, such an event? He says, إِذَا قَامَتِ الْقِيَامَةِ If the day of resurrection happened and one of you has a small plant that he was about to plant, let him plant it, let him sow it. What for? The day of destruction is coming. What is the Prophet ﷺ telling us to do when the Qiyamah is coming? Do your last good deed ever. Whatever you are doing of good, finish it if you can. So the Hadith says, فَإِنْ اسْتَطَاعَ أَنْ يَغْرِسْهَا if he, if he could sow what he has in his hand to sow, let him sow it. Let him put the seed in the ground. Who's going to benefit from it? He will benefit from just sowing it. Even though nobody will eat from it, it may never grow, but he will get the reward for sowing a seed even that nobody will benefit from now. What is the point of this hadith? The point is to tell us, now imagine if you know that the tree you're going to plant or the seed you are going to sow is going to be benefiting someone else after you. How much reward would this be? If just sowing it gives you a reward, even if it was the day of judgment, then imagine when it is not the day of judgment, how much reward you can have by just sowing the seed for something good, not just for a tree or a plant. So what will it be talking about? It will be talking that Allah has inspired it. Allah has ordained and commanded the earth on that day, on that moment, to erupt earthquakes everywhere and lava and volcanoes everywhere <coughs> and to throw whatever it has inside the belly of the earth. These are part of the news and the commands that Allah has commanded. And you read in the Quran, وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ Which means the earth has submitted to Allah and it has done so because it's due on it. It was waiting for that command to come at any moment. So the command came and Allah's will will be done on that day. What happens then? يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا On that day, people will be coming out of their graves and they will be spreading about. They will be spreading about. They will be scattered in groups and in, in the individuals. Anybody will be joining anybody. Everybody will be running away from everybody. And nobody knows where they are heading. It will be kind of like running to nowhere and aiming at nothing, but just moving for the sake of seeking any safety in motion. يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا Mankind will be proceeding into scattered groups that may be shown in their deeds. They will be reflected. So people who have done good, they will be running together. People who have done evil, they will be running together or in the same direction. So ashtata means the
they will be divided into groups based on their deeds and the works of their hands. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Anyone who does the good as good as equal one atom. In the past, people didn't know the word dharra. So they said that dharra means an ant, which is the lightest kind of insect that you, they could find. So they said the smallest one is an ant. But now we know that the word dharra could actually mean real atom as we know it today from science. Whoever does the atom's weight of good deed, he will be shown, he will see it. He will see the fruits of this good deed, even if it is one atom's weight of a good deed. And anyone who does the weight of an atom of evil deed, he will also see it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that day and put us among the people who have done tons of good deeds, not just an atom of good deeds. So what benefits should we pick from reading and studying this surah? Number one, the day of judgment is as true as we know the day and the night we recognize every day. As you see the day breaking up in the morning and the night coming to cover the day at night, as you see those, you should believe that the day of judgment is as true as the words you speak and the sounds you hear and the pictures you see. It is true. إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌّ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْطِقُونَ It is as true as you hear yourself talking. So number one, the Day of Judgment is true. Number two, the Day of Judgment is not just another day in the life. It is the last day of this life and the beginning of the other life. Some Muslim scholars, I believe it is the majority, they say that Every individual has his own Qiyamah. And they say, what is the day of my Qiyamah? It is the day I die. Because the day I die, and I get buried, and I am left for my deeds and my records, I see my place in paradise, I hope, or my place elsewhere. May Allah save us all from hellfire. So this is the individual day of Qiyamah. But the day of Qiyamah for the rest of humanity is the day when the big shaking happens to the earth. يوم الزلزلة يوم القارعة يوم الواقعة يوم الحاقة There's a lot of names for the day of judgment, one of which is الزلزلة. So الزلزلة is the last thing that happens to the earth. Then people will be thrown out of the graves and this will be the day of Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. So this is the second issue that we need to consider. It's a fact. It is unbearable. It is the last day for this life to end everything we know about life and to start the new life after accountability and being answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third is, there is no place to escape from the Day of Judgment. You know, when, when you read the writings of atheists, from whenever time they started to write until today, they have funny child's response to the idea of Qiyam. They think that if the Qiyama comes, they will turn into dust. That's what they say. And the Quran speaks to that. The Quran says, 
يا ليتني كنت ترابا I wish I had turned into dust like animals will vanish into dust and that's it that's it for them but for humans and for the high level animals that have thinking capacity that have plotting capacity that can harm and benefit each other those also Allah will judge between them in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, he says that even until Allah judges between a horned animal who attacked unhorned animal Allah will judge between them did you hit it with your horns why if Allah will do this between animals right what about us what about our accountability the fifth issue is it clearly mentions that our deeds are not measured or weight bulk rate it's not wholesale measurement it is by the atom imagine by the atom even the Prophet ﷺ says if someone after the battle and people receive the booties and their share of the booties he says on the day of judgment if anyone stole a piece of rope from the booties he will have to report about it so one atom is not a strange type of measure in the eyes of Allah everything counts also the fact that we will see our deeds and the results of our deeds is something that is brought here مَنْ يَعْمَلْ مَثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مَثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى He will see it. So facing what you have done is a huge issue because we are only living by the graceful, under the graceful cover by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if Allah were to expose everybody, including people sitting here and in similar places who are studying Quran, and the, it will be a humongous issue. But Allah is covering everybody, giving everybody a cover to take a chance to repent, to reflect, to take an opportunity to correct your ways. So this is also it pointed here by the fact that you will see an atom of your good deeds or an atom of your bad deeds on the day of judgment. If Allah covers you in this life, most probably He will cover you on the day of judgment. Because He has seen in His divine knowledge and wisdom that your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. But Allah does never never expose anyone from the first time or even the second time or even the third time and Umar ibn Khattab mashallah, was so smart anhu, one day they brought a person who had committed zina for Umar ibn Khattab to judge to apply the hadd so Umar al-Khattab took him on the side privately and asked him how many times have you done this? He said, no, no, this one time. I said, you are a liar. He said, how do you know that I am a liar? He says, Allah never exposes anyone from the first time. Only after Umar faced him with this fact and rejected his lie, the man got shocked because he didn't know he thought he could get away with it because he has been covered so many times so Omar repeated the question tell me how many times I said 18 times 18 times 1 8 so Allah covers us so much under 
the shade of his grace in this life to give us chances upon chances upon chances to repent and change our ways. May Allah help us to improve our ways and help us to meet his expectations in this life and in the hereafter. The last point that we get from studying this surah is that nothing is too big for Allah to keep and nothing is too small to ignore. Our records will keep everything. You read in Surah Al-Kahf, قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ The book of our deeds and our records, right? لَا يُغَادِرُوا صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهُ It doesn't leave out nothing small or nothing big without keeping it in the record. <coughs> So nothing will be out of record. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Qaf, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلِ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ He does not utter a single word except that it is recorded. If it is good, by the angel on your right shoulder. If it is bad, it is by the angel on your left shoulder and all our records will be given to us in a book. You read in Surah Al-Isra, وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ Every human being will receive his book hanging from his neck, like in a necklace, right? And it will be open. وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْ شُورًا and will bring out a book for him, his book of record, and he will find the book open. And he will be told, اقرأ كتابك Read your own book, which you wrote with your own actions. Does this mean that every human being is authoring his own book? Yes. Everyone, as we speak now, our books are being written. As you make dhikr, Allah is recording. The angels are writing what you're doing. So what is it that is not written? What is not written is our evil intention until we act on it. Can you believe it? What about our good intentions? You are rewarded for your good intentions. Even if you could not do it. This is how vast the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So I think we have seven minutes. We can take some. We can take some of your questions, inshallah, if you have any. Or else we can go for the Isha then, inshallah. Oh, you go through shaking events. Is this what you're referring to? Things that shake you in your life, like a shocking disease, a car accident, or somebody's home is burning, or some big event that can shake you to the core. Is this part of the zalzala? No, this is not the zalzala the surah is talking about. But this is part of the ibtilaat. It's part of the tests that Allah has told us. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِ This is part of the tests and the trials of this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us through ups and downs. Then some ups, some downs. This is that only constant thing in life is change. Some days you feel up, some days you feel down. But in between those days and those feelings, you are constantly invited when you are blessed to be grateful. 
when you are tested to be patient. So those are not the zalzala we are talking about in the surah. Okay, He's saying that you are saying, is the earthquake that we see in this life nowadays, is this part of those? No, it is a very minor sample of what an earthquake looks like. Very minor. No matter how big the seismic effect may be, it's very small. Yes. We have what? Not always, but, but most people are covered. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the question, uh, I'm heading for another question. It will be for everyone. Yeah, except for one group. Except for one group. Even the prophets will be questioned. And the nations that those prophets were sent to, they will be asked. So tell me, which group will not be questioned, will be rewarded without account? Who said? As-Sabirin, Jazakallah khairan, Ahsant. As-Sabirin, innama yuwafa as-Sabiruna ajrahum only the patient ones will be rewarded and I want you to pay attention to بغير حساب بغير حساب means two things one is to be rewarded without count and to be rewarded without account to be rewarded without count means endless reward to be rewarded without account means without reckoning, without standing hisab. Why are the Sabreen rewarded like that hefty reward? It is because a sabr mor, the taste of patience is sour. And the, 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 the plant that grows in the desert that we call a sabr, or cactus, <coughs> Dr. Noor, Dr. Noor, As-Sabru Mur, As-Sabru Mur, Mur, cactus. As-Sabru? Aywa? Mur? Mur. Mur, Mur. Right? Cactus, in the beginning of Sahara. Mur. People do not need patience when they are rewarded or given something good. When Allah blesses you with $10,000 into your account and you don't know where it came from, right? You don't need patience. But if it slips out of your account, then, then you have to think about being patient, right? So, as-sabiru innama yasbiru ala al-murr. When you lose a child, when you lose someone dear, right? This requires a lot of patience to accept Allah's qadr, even though you don't like it, to accept it. You say, Alhamdulillah, ala ma akhaf. Alhamdulillah, ala ma a'ta. This is a very high degree. So we, we exercise patience because of the afflictions that Allah puts us through. That's why the patient ones will be rewarded heftily without account and without limit. Yes? How to develop sabr? Huh? How to develop sabr? Very good question. How to develop sabr? I will put you through an exercise. We will delay the Aisha prayer for 10 minutes to answer this question. Okay, so the doctor is saying 10 is okay. So he is ready to be patient for 10 more minutes. 
But some of us may see 10 minutes like 10 years. 10 minutes, start counting. So how do we develop patience? That question was answered by the Prophet One day he was passing by a cemetery and he found a lady sitting next to a grave. And she was wailing and screaming and yelling and desperate. She lost someone loved to her. So the Prophet ﷺ came to her and he says, Isbiri amat Allah walakil jannah. Hold on to your patience, O servant of Allah, and Allah will give you jannah. Not knowing who's talking to her, she said, Asbir wama asbir, be patient. How could I be patient? It's my son. I lost my son. I have nobody. What are you talking about? What do you mean patience? What's patience? So he repeated his advice. Isbiri amal Allah walakil jannah. Be patient, O servant of Allah, and you will be rewarded with paradise. She repeated the same thing. After the third time, the Prophet ﷺ left her and went his way. Then a companion who's watching what's going on ran to that old lady and he said, Lady, do you know who was talking to you? She said, no, I don't know who is this. He said, this is the messenger of Allah, Rasulullah Muhammad She sprang up out of her place running after the Prophet saying, Oh, Prophet Muhammad, asbir, asbir, asbir. And the Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Patience shows its color and its value and gives you maximum reward when you are patient at the first shocking news of something bad. When something bad happens and you get the news in the beginning, and you say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon, alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal, inna lillahi ma akhad, wa inna lillahi ma a'ta, wa la naqoolu illa ma yurdi rabbana, then that patience is heftily rewarded. So how do we develop it? The Prophet sallallahu also gave a prescription. He says, Inna ma sabru bit tasabbur. The more you practice patience, the more patient you become. So what does the Quran say about what issues we have to be patient facing those issues? It says, Those who are patient regarding the afflictions that befall them. Whatever affliction, accept that it is a qadr from Allah. And there are two types of qadr. And I'm going to keep my promise, only 10 minutes. We have two types of qadr. A qadr that Allah enables us somehow with something to do about it. Like for example, if a student doesn't study well, or he is poor in some capacity in that subject, it's difficult for him. And he fails the course. That requires some patience, right? But if he meets this with resentment, his reaction will be different. But if he meets it with acceptance, saying, if it, if it is the will of Allah, then Alhamdulillah. But then he will have to work to overcome those difficulties. Okay? It's like a mother. And I'm giving the extreme example just to be clear. A mother who left some incense on fire, on the stove. But then she also left a baby at home and she went to just ask her neighbor for something and she comes back to find that the house is on fire. Right? How could she correct this? Does she have any means to correct it? It is her mistake. She shouldn't have done it to leave fire and a baby at home or to even leave fire, no baby, in the house. You know that the Prophet ﷺ prohibits us 
from setting anything on fire at home and leaving the home. If you set anything on fire, pay attention. Don't leave fire alone under any circumstances. And we know that some people sleep and you know candles are lit in the room or anything else, but there is a prohibition for that. So we have to be careful. So what is the point in the example? The point is there is qadr that you can change and there is qadr that your hands are tight. You can do nothing to change it. So do your best and leave for Allah all the rest. Do your best and leave for Allah all the rest. Did I answer the question? Okay. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. You have a question? What's your question? Can you use the mic? Use the mic, your dad. Let your dad amplify your voice. So what is the question about the swimming pool? Can you swim? In the beach or in the pool? Whatever your dad tells you is good, is good. Huh? <laughs> Whatever you agree with your dad is good. Inshallah. Any other question? Yes. Yeah, very good question. If a Muslim gets to the Day of Judgment and his bad deeds outweigh his good deeds, and he ends up in hellfire. The question is, is there a chance for him to come out of hellfire? The answer is yes. Allah, out of his mercy? I'm, I'm explaining. Allah, Allah, after sending everybody who deserves to paradise, and everybody who deserves to hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the angels to pick anybody who has been sent to hellfire because his hasanat came short of his sayyat. He will tell them, get anybody who still had an atom of faith in his heart, which means he believed in Allah. He said, la ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah, even once, okay, then Allah will order the angels to pick them out of hellfire and put them into paradise. And this will be the last question for tonight. I am within my time, and you have been very patient. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.